What's up everybody, it's Easy. Easy Street Gaming, Clash of Clans, making a little transition to Clash Royale. Doing the touchdown event. And uh for the first time we completed the event, second try. Pretty awesome for me. And uh it's a long video. I decided to record them all, watch them all if you want. There were some awesome matches. <laughs> you know, you kinda gotta have to get lucky a little bit with your partners. Uh, everyone played good on both sides this there was no easy matches especially towards the end uh, and so I'm gonna walk you through what, what we're doing also I have a theory on why we won and we'll go over that here in a few minutes too it takes a little luck too as you can see right there <laughs> uh, I also had some audio from the actual matches that I couldn't play because uh, I can't talk and play at the same time still Anyone who's ever seen uh, anything that I've done like that before knows what I'm talking about. So, I've also got the top cards, and I have them in order from which... They were the top cards in this particular uh, event. These aren't necessarily the top cards, period. Because in the event, they didn't have the Hog Rider. That, must, that has to be one of the top cards. Uh, they didn't have... I didn't see the giant... I didn't see, a, I didn't see a bunch of cards that we normally have. Again, another lucky one. <laughs> And uh, so the uh, let's go over some of these top cards and why. First of all, the battle ram. Uh, they, I think that has to be the top card because of the speed and because it takes. Uh, it, I don't know how many how much damage you have to do to them before they'll stop, but because of how fast they are, they can catch you off guard with that battle ram. And if you put a troop down and try to stop them. Unless it's a, uh, a strong troop like a wizard or or uh, maybe like the shock wizard that can jump on top of them. Uh, it's hard to stop them. And they definitely put a lot of pressure on the other team. Even though they may not... I don't know if they've, if one of those barbarians ever actually crossed the line. Maybe they, maybe they did once or twice. Uh, second one in this match would probably had to have been the, the, the golem. Just because of how much attention you have to put on the golem how much how much force you have to use to stop them and you have to actually change your game plan 100 percent once the golem's in play because if you don't do something about him if you don't put down buildings and if you don't put support around the buildings then they will they'll, they'll get into the end zone with with golem lava hunt's kind of the same way matter of fact i think we probably score the most touchdowns off of the lava pups than anything and then in the top Put it in the top row. We've got three rows. We got put it in the top row as a fireball. Um, you could argue that poison is the same. Uh, they do about the same damage. They have about the same effect. But we were just able to. You know, you can really see how, how important uh, the fireball is. And here, here it is. Towards the end of the first match, these matches are not quick. <laughs> that's that's another thing is these are not quick matches. So we ended up taking the first match. And that was a landslide. And you know, I think the competition's a lot easier in the, in the very beginning of the contest. Very beginning of it. I went times four, so we're gonna have to fly through the beginning parts. Uh, and and as you as you're moving forward, I don't know if it's tournament style and the winners play on type thing, but as you move forward, it gets a lot harder. And now look how far that battering ram got before they stopped him. It got all the way down the right hand side. Uh, both witches, both the night witch and the witch, they're both extremely valuable. And uh, let's go into how you win. We'll go into that right away. So, you know, if you don't have time to watch the whole video, um, you can at least take this away from the video. You don't win by how you play. You win before you even start. You have to pick the right cards. I would strongly suggest that you're not the one that picks four cards real fast and then waits for everyone else to pick. Um, I would pick one and then watch to see what everyone else does pick another one watch to see what everyone else does it's really important to do that now here here's another example of the golem look how much how many troops we had on the golem and they still got in I mean that was just unbelievable this was not an undefeated event either so anyway going back to the picks yeah so you have so it's really important that you watch what everyone else has and for example if they if you see you now you don't get to see everything obviously you don't get to see everything but if you see they have a lot of horde cards 
So they have maybe the skeleton army, they may have the, go uh, the goblin gang, uh, and you have a choice to pick either the rocket or the arrows. At, at that point, you'd want to pick, you'd want to pick the arrows because just because of what they have. So you're picking cards specifically for what you see in play, and at the same time, you're going to give away and you're going to take and give cards based on what's on what's out there too, with a few exceptions. Uh, you you know you're not going to ever give let's say the um, you're not going to ever give the golem away unless you ha unless you have either golem or lava how to choose from, and that's usually what they give you. Um, you're not going to ever give the ba battle ram away. Even though they usually put battle ram in there with maybe the uh, the balloon, or they put battle ram in there with other really tempting things, but it's the best card, so you don't want to give it away. Uh, also, you don't want to give away too many buildings. But uh, believe it or not, buildings are a huge part of this game, so you have to if you, if you, and not not all four players are going to have building cards. Uh, so you'll notice that you may go through several of the uh, of the choices. So, you know the beginning. I don't. I forget what it is. What it's called, but and you may not see any building cards at all. That's because there's another player that's get that's having to choose between all the building cards. So if you're the player that has to choose all the building cards, you want to make sure you have some uh, f for your team. And because I don't know how exactly how the picks work, I'm you're know, not part of the game. I observe. And there goes the the witch, and th there you see. One of the things that I always try to pick is if I see that a witch or the night witch, those are stronger cards than let's say the wizard. The wizard is a great troop, and and because of how strong he is, how much punch he has with that with his uh, with how much damage he he deals, but he is one troop. The witch is several. So as the witch is traveling down the field, she may she's spawning either bats or skeletons. And depending on what's pulling on them, they may be they may get scattered and be all over the place. So you have a bunch of different troops off of one card, and that's always a benefit. Whenever you have a a chance to get a card that can split into two, like the Lava Hound, like the, or, I mean, like the uh, like Golem, or that splits into many, like Lava Hound, or that produces troops, like the Witches, they are definitely one that they are definitely cards you want to pick up. And you'll notice too that everyone that's been playing here, uh, no one's a stranger at, at how everything works. Everyone's putting in air tanks and ground tanks. They, they're all defense-only troops. You have the you have the giant that's heading towards the end zone. It's a defense-only troop, so it's not going to stop unless a defensive piece gets put in uh, a, a, bu a building. And then you have the balloon, same thing. And now check out the defense here. I mean, stop them right at the goal line. <laughs> and we have wait till you see how many of these we have. Infernal Tower, it made it made the cut. It's the twelfth. I, th I thought it was the twelfth most important card. But going in a little more, so you had the fireball. Getting in the second row, you had the giant. Giant made the cut, no brainer. It, he has tons of hit points. He's going to pull the pack down towards whichever whichever side you're walking towards. Uh, the next couple may be a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, the mirror and the zap. I put them both in there because of one game in particular. I got the mirror card like two or three games in a row, and I had mirror and zap, and one, and that literally won the game for us because as you're approaching the other end zone, if they put in small horde troops like the like the skeleton army or like the minions or like uh, the goblins, I was able to zap them. And this is a two zap. This is not this is not lightning. This is a two zap. I was able to zap them, and that was actually lightning right there. Same concept right there. Uh, the reason why I didn't put lightning on this list though is because it's a six card, and it did win us two different. Um, it, we got two different touchdowns off lightning, but zap. I mean, th there was a lot of cases where we won because of zap. So anyway, yeah. So we we zapped the first time, cleared out. Then they put the, a group of cards on it again, backed it up right away, right there at the end zone. And then we put the second zap down on the on the on the mirror, and that actually won an entire match for us. Now, if you notice too, there are certain lanes that you're gonna that you're gonna travel down. So putting cards all over the place that's not gonna help you. They're gonna get pulled. They're gonna get pulled around anyway, depending on where all the other cards are, are put down. So you want to kind of keep your when you're attacking when you're in attack mode. You want to you want to keep your cards all the way on the left or all the way on the right, 
And then there are cases with certain with certain cards, especially the big tanking cards, that you want to go right down the middle. So try to avoid those uh, quarter and, and three quarter areas. Go go either the middle, I mean all the way left, all the way right, or right down the middle. So you kind of have three areas that you're going to put in. And right now you see all three areas being used. And what that will do is that will separate you enough that they can't put a card in, one card in, and it, it, it can't cover both sets of troops going down. So if you if you had put cards all over the place, they may be able to put one building in right in the middle, and it will stop cards from all directions because you have them too close towards the middle. But if you have them on extreme left and extreme right, then if they put a card in the middle, it may not pull either one of them to the middle. Now I forget exactly how many tiles it is, but I believe it's six tiles on most. Now the buildings change. I know some buildings are five, some are six. I think one is even seven. But you have a specific tile amount of tiles that the defensive buildings will pull the troops off of the side. You know, when they're running down the side, they'll pull them off the side towards the building. So you have to make sure you don't go and put them too far, too far towards the middle. So what I would suggest is you don't put buildings directly in the middle. You put you put buildings on where, where you'll run your troops down all the way far left. You'll run your troops down all the way far right, and then right down the center. That's not where you'll put your buildings. You'll put your buildings on maybe the one-third area and the two-thirds, wherever that is. <laughs> it's kind of a good example is right here. Now you'll see you, you'll see the uh, barbarian hut and you'll see the bomb tower. The, the barbarian hut's at the third mark and the, and the, the tower's at the two-thirds mark, and that covers the entire end zone. They have there no troops will walk by that. They they'll definitely go in. And you can see what I'm choosing here. You have a, a troop like the Executioner, and then you have a troop like the... What is she called? <laughs> uh, the Musketeer. So for, for me, the Executioner is an obvious choice. It does splash damage to multiple things. So troops that do sp splash damage gets chose before troops that do single target damage, even though if it's high power, single, single target damage. Uh, troops that are, are defense only is another tr is that something else that you w you definitely want to have even though you There's a balance that you have to try to maintain too, and it took me a long time You know, this is the first event that I've ever been able to win and I've been playing for long enough that I probably should have won by now but I'm sure there are people that, are, that will never win they'll never be able to win any of these events these events are not easy You have good players playing all right, so let's go into some of the more specifics. Here we drop down a large cl cluster on the right-hand side. Now, we kind of know, or I know, that we will not score on that side. They're going to defend that because they have pretty much the same elixir that we have. So regardless of what we put down the right-hand side, they're going to defend that. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to start going in waves. And we'll put a bunch of troops on the right hand side. They're going to defend on the right hand side. Then we'll put uh, several troops on the left hand side. And we're hoping that they will over defend on the left hand side. And then we'll put a second wave down the right hand side. Or maybe even the first wave will keep on. We'll be able to continue. Because they did not defend properly on the first wave. And they immediately switched to the second wave. Without you know putting enough troops in the first side. So it's all about switching back and forth. It's all about trying to trying to catch the uh, momentum and you'll see you don't see it as much in the beginning and you I'm sure you you've noticed this too when you are when you first start out you're not gonna see um, these momentum swings because you're either gonna get blown away or you're gonna blow them away you know <laughs> I didn't see too many great matches in the first three or four matches but once you get down into that uh, five six seven eight area you, you're uh, all players are pretty good at that point and they're all competent they understand the theory of it all and you're gonna have a lot of back and forth type matches and that's when you have to re really start to pay attention to what's out there what your actual threats are and don't overcommit because if you are waiting to be able to put a troop in that's when you're begging for trouble and you'll see often <laughs> often we were all white <laughs> And there's a great example of the lighting. Takes out two buildings, almost takes out a third, but they were already down.
Now at this point, I think I've won one, two, three, four matches. So we're halfway through the event. I have one loss, four wins, and this is usually right around the area where I've had some bad luck. I think in the past, and it's not all always them. <laughs> I'm sure some people have not been thrilled about catching me for for a, uh, a partner, because I, you know, I've made plenty of mistakes and. When they're crying, this is a, this is a little um, news flash. If your partner starts crying a lot when you first start, they're not really crying about their opponent. <laughs> so, I started getting this bad feeling too, because this is usually when it starts getting tough. If they end up scoring the first touchdown. I'm gonna drop the, I'm gonna drop both witches on the right hand side. He drops the Lava Hound on the right hand side. We're making a little push on the right hand side. Now you know that they're going to stop this on the right hand side. So what we do now is we start the little push on the left hand side. And what we're hoping is that they see what's going on on the left. And they commit to it before they take care of everything that's on the right hand side. And that's usually how you can get that, those fairly quick touchdowns. If you can come out with the first touchdown fairly quickly, then you have a big advantage because they have to not only do they have to come back. And there's the lava hound. Great job right there. And that was that was the first example of the double zap. Zap zap. That was a zap and a and the mirror. And my partner had put down the poison spell, so we had poison there. The bats were coming into it, so that helped a lot. And then I zapped it the first time. And then they put something else in. I zapped it the second time, and the, and the pups were able to come in. Now, when you have, when you're in threat mode and they're about to cross over the line, it's a good idea to either put them right on the line, or sometimes even right inside the touchdown, um, inside the end zone. And because you'll be surprised. Now look at this. Look how look how deep this. Look how deep <laughs> the golem gets. Doesn't get in, but wow. And uh, now, all the way down the right side, got the got the battle ram coming all the way down the right side. It hits the infernal tower. The infernal tower it stands up to it, takes out no. Those barbarians aren't really that strong, so they go down pretty quick. And at this point, there's a you know there's you'll see what's about to happen. There's about to be a lot of troops out there. <laughs> but now time's starting to run out. And when time starts running out, you know, it's one of those, it's one of those things. It's like being in a soccer game where the whole game, only one, there's only been one point scored, one goal scored. And now you have to try to get a goal in 30 seconds. It's, it just doesn't happen that way. So this, this is one of those things that you have to try to defend from the very beginning. You can't get off that, you can't give up that really quick, uh, touchdown. Going into overtime. They, they give you a lot of time in overtime. They give you three extra minutes. And now we're going to see a look. Now we're going to see a lot of pressure. We start putting a ton of pressure. Look at all these troops past the halfway mark. And there it is again. That's the zap. That's the mirror. That's why, the, that's why that made the top five. Top six. And this is a tough one for me to choose right here. Because it's the very first card. I don't know what else is going to happen. So I decided to, to, to choose the, uh, the the rocket. I ended up getting a bunch of big cards there. And I got the mirror too. And I was kind of bummed about that. Because I could have had the mirror and the zap again. Which I really did like that. I'd never used that before. And my partner. I wish we could talk. Because he's going right down that alley. That you really don't want to travel down. Because now, that, now you see where that balloon. That balloon got pulled over into the middle. And that balloon had really no reason to go to the middle. It should have been able to stay all the way on the right hand side. And, and check this out. Working hard on that. Working hard on the giant. He throws down the log. That pulls the giant back just enough for us to beat him in on the other side. And I thought that he, I thought they had scored that. Because I was over there focused on the giant. And here they come. I believe they had the battle ram. And... We got a bunch of troops surrounding them and believe it or not those guards 
you, you know, there's some troops that you wonder why they are what they are. And guards, they seem like they should be a common troop, but they're not. But you get them in this, you get them in, in this environment here, it's a lot different. Those guards are a lot heftier than just bar, just uh, skeletons alone. And the wizard almost got in. <laughs> My partner's uh, Mr. Ghost. Not the best sport there, Ghost. And this is why the Barbarian Hut, continuing down my list here, this is why the Barbarian Hut made it into this list. Uh, what a useful building. They keep on producing Barbarians. So you don't only have the defense of them back in your old goal line, but you have the Barbarians that are stretching out and giving constant pressure to the other team. So both the, go both the Goblin Hut and the Barbarian Hut are both very, very, very useful uh, uh, defensive buildings. And I wouldn't be disappointed if I had three buildings and, you know, and the rest troops. And look at this, they snuck a fire spirit down the middle. And I was right there. You can't see it on the replay, but I had the witch down and it just didn't quite uh, materialize fast enough. We're starting to get towards the, you know, this is uh, towards the end. Oh, and this is, this is cool. So, Rocket the first one. <laughs> I don't know if he was being a wise ass or not, but he, he he good gave me, so I decided to do it again. We rock the giant, and look how look how little a rocket takes off on the giant. Giants are so stout. A lot of surprisingly good troops, and you don't see it as much in the actual game as you do in this version of the game. Another one is the cannon cart. Cannon cart is extremely useful here. And now they make a big push down the left-hand side. We just happen to have all the buildings out already. Got a bunch of troops down. All you have to do at this point really is spread out and just make sure that they can't lightning you right there at the goal line. So remember, if they have lightning in rotation, that you don't really want to put everything on there at once. You want to make them push through the first building and then put the second building out the lightning will, will give those three big strikes and if you have smaller buildings like the barbarian hut or like the uh, tombstone or something like that those are those are, those don't have a lot of hit points and I if you notice there I chose the mortar over the Tesla and that's because of the range on the mortar that mortar has great range compared to the Tesla the Tesla now it does a bunch of strikes and it's really good against small troops but the mortar it, it has really good range and it'll stretch out pretty far away and you know it has a kind of almost the same range as the crossbow does except for it doesn't have that big price tag that the crossbow does and you can see how strong it is right there it easily one shots all the goblins one shots all the skeletons uh, I don't I think it one shots the archers here comes the executioner down the corner and look at the princess she didn't make the list but the princess is another great troop she has great range uh, really flimsy, but great range in this. The timing she has is, is just phenomenal. I, I don't know if it's you know if it's uh, you know specially timed that way, but it seemed like she was on time with every one of these shots. And if you just watch that one princess, look how much damage she did. That's one troop, one princess, one three card has literally taken out half their army. It was amazing. And didn't make the top the top 12. <laughs> now, one up there that you might be surprised about was the bats. Uh, we'll go over the bats here in a second. Because uh, the reason why uh, we have the, the two buildings that we, you didn't even see a lot of, but are really important. One is the furnace. And the reason why the furnace is so important is because those fire spirits, they t they do really well against the minion hordes, against the skeleton hordes, and those are those are a couple of of cards that if you don't have, you know, you, you can't choose your cards. You're 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 pretty much. Oh, and here here's another one. Look at this. We're on the goal line, holding back Gollum. And I don't know how that golem did not score first. I just don't know. I mean, it looked like it was over the line. I was shocked. So here's the furnace again. 
and I don't think that we actually used it very well as a matter of fact I only could choose the furnace one time and I did but um, it really did a number on us so we we went to a little mishap right there because they, I, I don't know why they went for the troops and not the furnace with the rocket oh well but there there's a great great move by them they put the Tesla tower in uh, ends up pulling the lava hound right to the middle of the field it got dismantled real quick and here comes Gollum put the motors in put the motor down Gollum ends up getting pulled getting pulled in the middle we have a bunch of small troops out and now <laughs> right at the last second put the giant in my partner like that it pulled it pulled about seven troops from across the line to chasing the giant around down to the last one now this is uh, this has been a long video I know but this is this is another I mean I it's not as tense watching them as it was playing them but there were some really tense moments playing these games and now here we are I don't know if my partners in the same has the same amount of wins as I do but this is for the win got one loss so I have a little cushion on top of that which that, that was that made it a lot easier to play with that little cushion uh, I was able to relax a little bit you know you don't really want to relax too much but I was able to relax a little bit and play a little looser than I would if it was you know win one you win lose one you lose type thing lose up for the whole match so we got a good push off the very f the very first push the wizard gets almost down to the end they put a nice wizard in block Meanwhile, we got uh, the bowler coming down, and you know, bowler, slow troop, but at the same time, he's got that pushback for the for the for the bowlers that he has. So even troops that are really good against the ground troops, like the Valkyrie, she didn't really have much luck. It took it took Valkyrie and the bomber, which you know, a bomber can take out any horde troop really easily, and makes it. We make another good push, and if you notice. Most of the action is going down on their half of the field, and they really haven't gone across the field too much yet. But they put the Goblin Gang in, end up putting uh, the the Knight in at the last minute. And Knights, you know, one of those underestimated troops that we get really early in the game, so we don't put as much value on him as we probably should have. But he's got a lot of hit points. He's got a good damage per second. And check this out: the Witch. They ended up lightning. <laughs> They were, they were paying close attention to that witch. They ended up lightning the Electro Wizard, but uh, was able to follow it right up. And here's here's some range right here. Musketeer doesn't have a lot of hit points, but she has that great range and the, the, a lot of damage per, per shot, damage per second. And finally got a troop that I like. I like, I like having the, the Infernal Dragon. I, I hesitate every time I have to say a new troop because I, there's so many troops going through my head it's hard for me to remember them all even though I do actually know them all <laughs> so another push now what we what we're trying to do is we're, we're leading the troops with the poison spell I think we have arrows as well so we have two different weapons to weaken them as we're pushing up and uh, you know another good push we, we set they did a good goal line stand though they, they ended up we have two wizards right right on the bomb tower but bomb towers are so good against the, these ground troops that not even two wizards can take down the bomb tower and another troop that came really close to making the top 12 is um, is the dart wizard new troop dart wizard <laughs> the dark goblin because he does so much damage for such a small troop and it's so fast and they wanted it right here they they ended up we split the golems the golems that they ended up lightning us trying to get the, push the golems through those last two buildings we ended up holding them off we have a bunch of small troops and including those guards which you know how delicate the balance is those guards just because they don't they have the shields are able to beat back the the witch and a witch can take out an entire skeleton army and this was trouble right here now we have I don't have any building in sight I ended up putting down the lava hound I'm sorry the the lava hound was coming towards us I ended up putting in the infernal dragon he drops the poison the poison kills all the all the lava pups really quick 
And now we're making a push for the other side. And actually, I thought for a second that we had something going here because we had the Infernal Dragon. Ended up uh, put, using the arrows, but they just had too much backup going on. They're in times two, so we're, we're able to filter through a bunch of troops. But now we're starting to make our way down towards them. Uh, got a Mega Minion down there. Got a Balloon down there. So if we can do something with these troops down here where the Balloon is at, then we, uh, you know, I was feeling like we had it. We ended up putting the Poison down. And the poison, I think, was just enough to take out the ice wizard, took out the uh, took out the dark goblin. That was the win that win it all, which I could not believe it. So easy, finally wins his first event without having to spend three hundred dollars trying. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it was long. Uh, if you made it this far, then you are dedicated because it's hard to make it through a half hour video. Anyway, I appreciate everyone for watching. Till next time, it's been easy.